Hi guys, a uh, slight change of pace in video today. Um, rather than doing reviews and testing and the commonplace crashing or anything like that on the radio controlled stuff, um, today I'm just going to do a bit of a, a product showcase for some of the uh, the new designs that I've actually come out with recently. Um, now some of the people who have subscribed to my videos, most of you have probably looked at my videos and subscribed because of the reviews. Uh, many of you might have done it because I'm using aircraft similar to yours or building, things like that. Um, there are a, a fair few out there that actually know that as uh, part of of my DJI Phantom work, um, I actually do a bit of 3D design work. Um, I've been doing a lot of designs on the um, the Phantom 1.5 conversion that I did. Um, and I design many of the doors that are available out there on Shapeways um, and other 3D parts for it, including things like custom under trays, um, LED holders, Fat Shark um, camera mounts, and things like that. Um, I haven't done any designing for a long time. Um, I, I love it. I don't do it full time. Um, I am a qualified designer, but I only do it really for the hobby work. And generally speaking, I'll only do designs around some of the kit that I actually have myself uh, because, well, twofold really. Number one, it tends to be because there is a need that I have to, uh, to to actually have a mounting or have a fixing or a holder or something uh, for equipment that I own and number two if I don't own that piece of equipment it's very very difficult if not impossible to get a 100% accurate design so I don't really do custom work for other people um, you know some people have given me dimensions and I've made you know various items but I prefer just designing about kit that I can actually hold touch I can tell you know where the holes are where the pins come out where the buttons need to be the obstructions and things like that. Anyway, the um, the products that I've just uh, released, I thought I'd just run through them on a video. Um, there are a few products which, um, again, they're all based around very popular items that are all laid out on this um, on this table. Um, so starting from uh, from this side here, um, this is the um, the well known Immersion RC slash Fat Shark 5.8 gigahertz patch antenna, very popular narrow beam. Um, antenna um, that really needs to be used either on an antenna tracker or at bare minimum kind of on a rotating uh, platform like a tripod um, or something where you can actually aim it directly at the aircraft because the beam is very kind of very narrow it only comes out at this sort of uh, this this sort of angle um, so for that reason I needed to mount it to my ground station my ground station is actually kind of a, um, a case which has a tripod mount on the back of it um, and and I wanted to be able to put this onto that so it could run to the diversity um, receiver that I've got inside the case and I could then move it around on that tripod. Now, while I could have used just screws, no problem there, not particularly easy to do and also it would have meant that the back of the case would have to be tilted and moved itself. So I wanted something where I could rotate it left to right but I could put it on the back of it and I could lift it up. So I reached out to good old GoPro who obviously being the fact I've got so many GoPro cameras I've got so many of their mountings and came up with this little design here and basically very simple as you can see very simple little design whereby you've got your four holes here mounts over the top of it three, uh, four M M3 screws go in the back of it and that just holds it onto the back of the patch antenna you've then got your GoPro fixing point there the reason that it's slightly off centre is so if you have actually got an extension cable like I do that it actually drapes down here so it doesn't get in the way of the fixing point otherwise it can get snagged and gets a bit awkward and sometimes the heat shrink gets in the way. Um, so yeah, so for that reason it's slightly off centre but no problems there. And uh, and yeah, and that literally is, is a case of if I just grab this, uh, this suction cup mount that I have here, the GoPro suction cup, um, basically it just slots in via the usual fixing and then you just do it up screw it up and that will mount on the back of it and then that just gives you the ability again of being able to move it up and down left and right and also you can mount it to the tripod mount if you want to so uh, so that's that one fairly uh, fairly straightforward speaks for itself really um, but quite useful um, next thing, if I just pop this down, sticking with Immersion RC as I have with a few of the products, um, this is another popular item. This is the Easy UHF, which I use from time to time on my fixed wing flying. Uh, this is the rather large diversity eight channel transmitter. Um, now, the problem that I have with this, there's nothing actually wrong with it, but I am always a little bit conscious that my flying isn't exactly perfect, shall we say. And also, if you're flying at long range, there's sort of a higher risk of losing the aircraft, losing 
using your OSD screen, um, having an accident, plane comes down and you ruin all your equipment. Now these things are not cheap as everyone who's bought one is aware. Um, so I wanted to have a bit of extra protection on it. So all I did was I created a little two two part device. So all you do is we just slot the bottom half into here and then there's uh, there's a little nodules here which go over the top of the antenna as you can see there and it just slides together. Now there's no clip, I haven't designed or developed a clip or anything like that. If you want to actually hold it together you can either just insert some uh, a cable tie or a very thin piece of I would suggest a bit of garden wire, wrap around garden wire, that holds that in place. But the other thing and the one that most people will do is you can actually fit a velcro, um, a velcro tie onto this. So if I just grab this velcro tie here so you can loop it through the side there, pull that out Put it around the other side and then obviously if you've got something if you're using a multi-rotor you could put an arm or a beam or something like that through there if not and you just wanted to fix it down all you've got to do is you've just got to um, get it to the size and the shape that you want which this obviously isn't at the moment anyway and then you just strap it together and bobs your uncle around there and also of course you can if you use a double sided one like this you could actually velcro that to uh, you know, to one of the parts of it, um, but yeah, but that's uh, nice and simple, very basic. Again, you've got all the space for your um, for your outputs, um, so there's no um, there's no real issues there. You can still get to your USB, but again, it just holds it and it just gives it that little element of protection, something to break rather than the actual transmitter itself, um, which is kind of important from that point of view. Okay, so final thing from the Immersion RC range. Uh, this isn't really a new product actually, um, but basically what I've done is a custom holder for the 600 milliwatt um, uh, video transmitter. Um, this is very similar actually if I just grab it uh, for a long time now, one of my first products that I ever did as part of my Phantom um, custom under tray was to develop a little housing much the same as the Easy UHF that held the Fat Shark 250 milliwatt video transmitter slides in there cooling for your um, for the heatsink you can get to the cable so you can plug all your cables in the back of it and it comes supplied with a little door door goes on there so a little door goes on there and then a couple of cable ties or a bit of garden wire or even a paper clip or something like that holds it in place it means it's not going anywhere and that's basically the design I came up with for that. That's been out for ages, very popular. Lots of people seem to be using those, which is very kind of everyone using them. Um, so this is just a version that fits the 600 milliwatt perfectly. You can actually fit the 600 milliwatt in that one. Um, the only problem is the door needs a slight tweak to it um, and it's a little bit sloppier. So this one actually fits um, very much deliberately. I've changed the dimensions on it. So you just slide your transmitter in there nice and snug, very little movement, there's always going to be a little bit of movement because they make them slightly differently with the heat shrink um, and then all you do is you just fit your door, a couple of tabs so there's a bit of a friction fit to begin with there we go and actually the production version of this has a slight indentation for this so you can actually get around the door where the antenna fits and again you just use a cable tie, something like that uh, the other thing worth mentioning is that you can see there's a gap down here so if you want to you can put a, um, a velcro strap through that gap and again you can mount it there or you can put some sticky tape and some pads or velcro something like that so that's for the video transmitter um, so that's all the immersion RC stuff covered now the other items that you can see um, are the ever popular um, Fayetech G3 Ultra gimbals so this is the aircraft version this is the handheld version uh, both great little gimbals very happy with them um, Fayetech are just coming out with the the new version the G4 which is not a major upgrade but certainly aesthetically it's going to be a bit different um, should have one of those in my hand hopefully within the next couple of weeks actually um, to do a product review on testing things like that um, but for the moment the um, the two things that have come up and most of these have actually come up from comments on either the YouTube channels or emails sent to me from those YouTube videos um, about a couple of parts that, that people have said would be useful now the first one that I'll talk about here is for the aircraft version of the gimbal now nothing wrong with the aircraft version, holds on securely, no problems there. The issue is that on an aircraft gimbal, of course, if you fall out of the sky, your GoPro is going to get bricked. 
last thing you want to do is have your lens smashed. So what people like to have the option of having is a lens protector or an ND filter or something that's going to just cover that lens and give it an element of hope from, uh, from getting damaged. Now the problem with the existing ring cover is that because it's friction fit, as you can see, it really just will fall straight off there. Uh, you'd have to either glue it or you'd have to find a way to, to pin it down. So that's a bit of a problem and likewise if you want to use an ND filter to try and get um, to, to use it for some jello um, as people seem to do um, or some, some you know just, just sky effects and stuff like that then it doesn't really give you an option. Um, so what I've done there is I've done the best I can to try and develop something that's usable so I'm just going to take the existing one off so I'm going to undo the, the thumb screws and actually we're not going to be using these thumb screws main reason being that I can't put brass inserts in a 3D printing design on Shapeways which is a shame but not necessarily essential so we pop that off and then this is the part that we're going to replace it with so this is the thing that I've designed and basically as you can see nothing particularly rocket science about it but there is a nice thin if I just hold it up there hopefully it will come into focus there's a nice thin 1.5 millimeter space here and the idea is basically you've got these little pins at the back they will actually go into these back holes where the screws were so we just pop them in there slide it over the top of the lens they slide in there so that's now seated so these little pins come out of the back they don't hold it's not it's not a screw fixing or anything like that but the idea is because they're in there you can't move left to right it can't actually slide out sideways um, Obviously we need to then protect it from falling forwards and the way we do that is to just use the good old fashioned rubber band method. Um, obviously you need to make sure you've got the right size of rubber band. My one looks like this and is maybe a little too big. Um, but all you do, you can see there there's a hook at the top. We just hook that on the top, hang it down, grab it, pull it around the bottom, pop it out, make sure it's snugly fitted in there. And as you can see, that is now holding that on. Obviously, make sure that that rolls up around the back nicely there so it can't slide off sideways past these recesses. And you'll see with the right rubber band that that gives you ample protection from it falling off. It's also actually quite a nice fail-safe. So from the point of view, if you did actually crash your aircraft, this will come away and it will actually reduce the impact so your, your camera is going to go rolling off into the grass somewhere but that's actually probably better than it being held in place and having the whole impact of the entire gimbal potentially falling down on top of it so um, so yeah it's an option that some people aren't going to be uh, wanting to use it's not really something that I would recommend just replacing it for but the most important thing because of this very thin 1.5 millimeter um, flat space here you can get your standard GoPro filter and you can push that on and you can push it down and it goes now down far enough where as you can see it takes quite a bit to actually pull that off nothing you know I can't flick that off like I could before if I rattle it around and obviously you gotta bear in mind that this is actually going to be stabilized whilst in flight so um, so it's going to be actually weighted so there's not a lot of stress going on it anyway but that that won't come off um, in flight so it just gives you an option for people who uh, who wanted to be able to use an ND filter Ho hopefully that gives you enough gap obviously for people who are using NDs I don't actually use them because I have to admit I don't think they do anything to actually counteract jello um, vibrations come from somewhere so you want to get rid of the vibrations um, but if you are using one um, then hopefully that will actually give you an option so uh, so that's that and last but not least the handheld version of the gimbal now fantastic little gimbal really like them and a lot of people really want to be able to use them in other locations other than actually in their hand so for example on bikes um, on in cars um, being able to mount them to um, you know to the inside of a windscreen something like that something where you get a nice stabilized shot but you um, you don't have to actually have your hand physically on it so to do that again I've reached out for the GoPro option so it's a little bit bright because it's a white design because it's a prototype version of it but basically all this is if you take a look on the inside of there if I get a bit of shadow recess contours which match the contours of the G3 Ultra so you get a little ridge here and another ridge and then you've got these grippy knurled parts here and literally all you do is you select which way round you want it to go so I want it on the back for example turn it right way up 
make sure the contours match make sure you've got it nice and sort of central push down clunk and it's there and for those of you who are thinking oh no well that's not going to hold up I give you the shape test and as you can see I've blurred my camera but that really isn't going to come off very easily at all and believe me it's actually you know to, to actually get it off you put two thumbs here and you push forward but that's um that's basically the idea and obviously you've then got the gopro mount so you can fit the tripod mount you can fit the suction mount um perfect example uh if i haven't actually lost the pin oh, there it is uh suction mount here let's say we wanted to fit it to the suction mount slide it into the hole drop the thumb screw and lo and behold there you go now it's in the suction mount so that's actually going to be giving us a stable shot obviously it's not going to be at that angle but so you can see it that is actually now fixed to the, the suction mount and obviously you could then fix that to the um, sticky pad mount uh, anything like that people like um, bikers for example um, on your helmet um, as long as there's not too much wind resistance it should it should cope with it relatively well um, personally I don't think it's going to cope with anything much more than about 30 miles an hour before it starts tripping out the gimbal but by all means give it a go um, now one thing that a lot of people will say is hang on well that is just a clip that isn't actually bolting my gimbal in um, I am currently trying to work on this which is another prototype which unfortunately the dimensions did not work out too well for me um, this again the idea is it's using equipment that is available to you if you've got a GoPro and all it is hopefully you can see this is that this little recess here is designed to fit one of the GoPro nuts that you can just pop out of one of the um, one of the holders so one of these little jobbies here so you just stick a screwdriver in from the other side push and it will pop out that will then go into into there that means that you can then clamp this around the gimbal in the same way that that's clipped on this will clamp around it once you've done that you then get your GoPro um, actual GoPro mount here is made up so that's all measured as it should be um, and then you just tighten on another one there so you will end up with a clamped gimbal um, and it won't be able to move out fall out do anything like that so um, so yeah not available yet because I've got some tweaking to do because the dimensions weren't perfect on that but um, but yeah so anyway so they're all the products um, hopefully that's useful to a few people like I say it's really just I wanted to just showcase some of these in case there's a few designs that people might find useful I know for a fact that a few people that have watched my videos have already asked me for some of these designs and whether or not they could be done especially things like the uh, the filter for the uh, for the G3 Ultra. Um, so yeah, so there they are. Obviously, if you do want to uh, have a look at them, uh, I'll put the link to my uh, my Shapeway shop at the bottom of it. And obviously, if anyone does buy it, I very much appreciate it. Um, and hopefully, my subscribers and anyone who sees this video can get something out of it.